Hey, Ross, thanks for doing this today. Hey, Rob. Um, in the past, you've talked about um, off seasons and trade deadlines as being the next steps in, in, in getting uh, this team to where it wants to be. With that in mind, where is the is there a sense of urgency that this this that this off season will be more significant than any of those other opportunities? Well, it just keeps getting a little bit more exciting for us. I think, hopefully, for the fan base as well, and, and certainly internally, and and speaking for our you know our players as well. The the sentiment amongst our clubhouse and amongst our staff, and certainly in our front office, is exceptionally optimistic about where this team is headed and excited about this offseason for us and the potential to continue to build upon the progress that has been made and you know obviously we're not where we want to be yet uh, we need to be playing deep into the playoffs to take that next step but we do feel like the organization has continued to get better and improve and uh, you know we're in a better position than we were a year ago as we go into this offseason. Um, how, how, how have you identified priorities for this offseason now? Well, I mean, you know, really it's – we don't want to paint ourselves into boxes as we, uh, you know, we're 48 hours into our offseason now and want to make sure that we keep all avenues for creativity open, and, and that's what we're focused on now. Um, how do we continue to make this organization as good as it can be? Uh, what additions can we make in the short term and long term? Um, you know, what, what are the best possible and the most creative ways to do that? Good. Thanks, Ross. All right, Rob. Next is Keegan. Hey, Ross. Thanks for doing this. As you, uh, as you look ahead to any potential acquisitions, what are some of the areas that you think will make that difference in terms of adding a few more wins, um, whether it be defense, pitching, where that focus would be? Well, you know, as we, as we think about it uh, from a starting standpoint, as I, as I briefly mentioned to Rob, I feel as though, we feel as though our organization is in a very good position and in a better position than we were starting last off season. As we think about com complimenting Yunchin Ryu, uh, now we have Barrios and Alec Manoa, Nate Pearson and, and others to Ross Stripling to, uh, as a starting point is a, is a good place to be. So, um, you know, the, one of the biggest developments of the year, I think, for us is just having two of the best players in the game in Bo Bichette and Vlad Guerrero. They were projected to be that a year ago, and, and this year they were that. Um, just remarkable what they've accomplished. So that's a, a really good starting point. And as we think about complementing our, our infield and, and continuing to make our rotation better, um, we, we feel that there's – opportunities this offseason via free agency and trade to do that. And when you're looking at a bigger picture at all of this, Ross, in terms of available payroll and also in terms of prospect capital and what you can deal from, where are you feeling the organization is at on both of those fronts in terms of what opportunities they can give you? Yeah, I, I think on both fronts we're in a, a really good position. We've we've done um, – you know, the, the scouting department, player development, performance, all scouting departments have done an incredible job to ensure that uh, we continue to have talent from within to complement this team. And if we have to make trades, that we have the talent to do that as well. And Mark has done an incredible job of communicating with Rogers and ev all of the stakeholders that uh, ultimately support us in the most significant way um, of helping them understand our plan from six years ago to six months ago and now six weeks ago and, and each step of the way um, you know making ownership a part of that process to ensure that we have are doing everything in our power to have the the most support possible your turn Arden. hey Ross thanks for taking the time um, likewise when you kind of think about how you want to augment that lineup core that you were mentioning with Vlad Bo to Oscar like what kind of characteristics in the hitter do you think would really complement that group, whether it's you know, handedness, contact, speed, power, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the obvious one is that we are a little bit right-handed. You saw even just when Dickerson was having good at-bats and when Kevin Biggio came into the lineup, it's not just that they're left-handed, but how we are attacked and uh, you know, potentially the pitchers that are used is, is different. Um, 
And then secondarily, I, th I think, you know, we, we feel it's important to have balance and not just the same type of hitters throughout up and down your lineup. So some players that are more batting average driven and some players that are more on base driven with, uh, you know, plate discipline. I think having both is, is exceptionally powerful um, and having a combination of all of those things is ultimately, I think, uh, what we're striving to do. And you mentioned Nate Pearson. Um, just what's his offseason look like? Is he headed for a procedure to address the, the sports hernia issue? What do the next few months look like for him? He really felt good at the end of the season. So he, I, I think today he's getting an assessment um, with a doctor again to determine if that procedure is going to be needed or not. But he felt great at the end of the year. And so uh, we'll get a little bit more information before we make that determination. Great. Thanks, Ross. All right, Arden. You're up, Ben. Hey Ross, thanks for the time. Um, like so this, this, um, this season obviously worked out really well for Robbie Ray and for Marcus Simeon. Um, they're positioned very well as they head into free agency. Well, I'm just wondering what you expect those conversations to look like in particular with those two players once the free agent period uh, begins. Yeah, I, you know, one, I, I, as I said to them, each of them individually and together actually uh, <clears throat> had a, a lot of time to spend with them over the last month and um, you know, much more on a personal level to just um, learn from them, talk about how we can improve here and, um, you know, congratulate them and, and thanking them for us to be a small part of what will be ultimately an exceptional year for them in their careers. And I hope they go on to continue to obviously have those years year in and year out, and hopefully we can be a part of that. But having been a part of it for one year was very fulfilling and gratifying, not only for what it meant for in wins and losses and our overall team performance, but also what it means for our environment to have guys come in and have such exceptional years like that it says a lot to our coaching staff, says a lot about our support staff, about our resources and facilities. And um, you know, I think that um, will be exceptionally attractive to players moving forward. So if you can, and I understand you can't share the very uh, detailed aspects of it, but where did you kind of leave that off? Like, do you expect to continue conversations with those two guys? Yeah, I, I mean, we've, that dialogue will be constant, where we're talking about their interest, our interest, and, and hoping that they're aligned. For sure, thanks. All right, Ben. Your turn, Steve. So further to what Ben was just asking there, if you've been talking to Robbie for a period of time, and you've been talking to Marcus for a period of time, and I presume you've been talking to their agents as well, what would you say to Blue Jay fans or the odds of either of those, both of those, and I want to include Steve and Matt's in there as well, <laughs> three guys that you came out of last winter with, all, you know, four guys who had exceptional years, three guys that, that are free agents again. What is your sense of the odds of one, two, or all three of them being Blue Jays next year? Well, I, I think it bodes exceptionally well for us that we were a part of such significant years for all three of them. Steven Matz as well had an incredible year. And being a part of that and having the team success, albeit not what we ultimately were striving for, I think uh, how we finished and finishing in this stadium so in such a positive note, um, again, not realizing our ultimate goal, all of those things bode exceptionally well for us as we strive to to make our team better and all three of them uh, we have interest in uh, if you sit now and, and watch the red sox play how much of you is sitting back and saying i can't believe we're not there and they are there you know i it's mostly what i focus on is desire and you know what we can do to ensure it doesn't happen again is is how i how i view it and how i watched every pitch last night um, and you know i wish all the best for those organizations and for the red sox but uh, i spend all of my time and energy on thinking about how we can ensure that we are in those games next year okay mitch hey ross thanks for the time likewise uh, 
wondering how you kind of look back at last off season and previous off seasons. Are there any kind of team building lessons you take away from how this last group went and anything you've changed? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's always lessons. It's daily. You know, they're, they're daily as something as simple as just talking to players from other organizations about their experiences and things that we can improve upon based on having guys like Yunchen Ryu and George Springer here who have so much experience in other places and how we can improve upon our existence and resources. And, you know, from a team building standpoint, we're just constantly trying to be more balanced and more versatile. And, and that just doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, sometimes it may take addition by subtraction. Uh, we haven't done much of that. We haven't subtracted from our major league team. So, um, you know, we have to be open to all avenues. But, you know, really, it's not something that is holistically different that we will aspire to do, uh, but continuing to try to make our team as balanced and ver as versatile as possible. And then obviously the bullpen was an area you guys addressed a bit during the year and brought in some guys who have control years going forward. How do you kind of feel about that group and is there still a type of pitcher you think it could use? Well, the, the progress of Jordan Romano and Tim Meza is what jumps out at me. I, I just can't say enough about, um, you know, the, those guys really in some, in some points of the year put some, some guys on their back and did some exceptional things. And they're so early in their careers to have done that. And that bodes exceptionally well for their futures. And then complimenting them with, with Simber and Richards really seemed to help stabilize things for us to put other guys in more uh, you know, suitable positions for them to be successful. Uh, we, we definitely had a lot more depth in that area towards the end of the year. So having a starting point of Romano, Meza, Barucki, Simber, Richards, uh, depending on where things land with Merriweather, we're hopeful that Pearson will be someone that's more of an extended outing, closer to a starter look for us. Stripling as one that could be in either role is a great starting point with depth in AAA. Some guys we're excited to add to our, ro our roster this year as well. So, um, but really, I, I would be. Uh, disappointed in myself if I didn't talk about Jordan Romano and Timmy Meza and just the uh, unbelievable years that they've had. I mean, Jordan Romano and his gas ball might be one of the, we had so many good baseball stories this year. I feel confident in saying that um, I'm sure that we made some baseball fans bigger fans this year and feel confident in saying we may have created some baseball fans this year with uh, the love and the passion that our team had for one another and how much joy and passion they had for the game and the sport and competing uh, was was certainly inspiring to me and, and hopefully it was to our fans. Thanks, Ross. All right, Mitch. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Ross. Hope you're well. Uh, just wanted to pick Likewise. up on something you just mentioned there. Uh, you mentioned that, Nate, you see him uh, – closer to an extended outing up to a starter kind of role. As you, you know, he's obviously missed some time with innings in the past few years. How do, what's the buildup for him in his off season look like? And for, as he goes into spring training, do you envision him as a starter or as a relief option? As a starter, but it, we have to factor in workload. We have to factor in development and doing what's best for him. So it's just too hard to say exactly what it will look like, but uh, on the spectrum of things, I hope it looks a lot more like a starter than a reliever, but we'll be open to all roles and all ways to uh, have him help us win. Okay. Uh, and just bi bigger picture, you know, as, as you guys are situated with what you have in place right now uh, and sort of looking towards the, the marker that you're trying to catch, which would be the raise, where do you see the gap between you guys right now? How, how would you describe the gap between, between the two teams? You know, it's interesting. We're different teams. Um, I think that we are uh, as talented and that we can certainly compete with them. I don't see a large gap. Um, you know, they've, they've done an exceptional job of preventing runs over the year. And then this year, they just did a great job of scoring them as well. So, uh, you know, they have a little bit more team speed. We have a, a lot more power. And, um, you know, individually, we had performances that 
Um, I think <clears throat> as these guys come together as a group and as a team and get some consistency in and around them, uh, we're going to be right there with them. But we've got to continue to, uh, you know, strive to be above them, not just right there with them. Thanks, Russ. All right, Shy. Your turn, Julia. Hey, Ross. Thank you for doing this. Uh, sure. This team seemed to be a, a good mix of uh, young and veteran talent. How important will that component be for you uh, moving forward from your viewpoint, especially talking about players like Simeon and Robbie Ray? Yeah, I think, you know, we have it without those guys as well, with Yunchen Ryu and George Springer, uh, just to name a couple. But... Um, but it is important, and that will be uh, an arena that we can improve in, in in the free agency pool, and we will certainly be in it, and those two players we will certainly remain interested in. And what did you see uh, from your standpoint, the uh, veteran guys? How did they impact your young core? What did you see in the clubhouse? Really, I, I – could not be more pleased with how well that group gelled. And it's never perfect and it takes time, but I think at the end of the year, it was easy to see. And not you didn't have to be in the clubhouse to see it, that there is a very good dynamic in our dugout and in our clubhouse. And the starting pitchers walking in together, um, the, the group celebrating one another to a man for individual and team performances and just as I said, how much joy and passion. I, I, I think in many ways our young players made our veteran players better too. I don't think it was just one, one direction. So, um, you know, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was incredible energy for me to be around. As I said, it was inspiring to me, and I'm, I'm confident that we'll be able to continue to build upon it. Thanks, Ross. All right, Julie. You're up, Gregor. Hey, Ross. Thanks, as always, for doing this. Likewise. Um, the, uh, the last couple of years, you guys have been among the more aggressive spenders in, in free agency, and your, your payroll's up quite a bit compared to, to where it was a couple of years ago. And you've kind of talked about spending and increasing in waves as well. Uh, just wondering if, if you're expecting and if you have the flexibility for another significant bump uh, in payroll this year in terms of your expenditures compared to your last two. Uh, as I mentioned, that that is – our desire and that is our understanding uh, as we sit today we feel as though we will have the support uh, we've always had it and mark has done a remarkable job of just every step of the way uh, in sharing our vision uh, you know helping understand where our focus is and giving rationale for uh, why we want to do the things that we're trying to do and we've always had that support and expect to have it moving forward um, you, you guys got uh, some, obviously some one-year deals last year as well in addition to Springer, but a lot of times a lot of the, the prime free agents come with, with a lot of years attached to it as well. How do you, how do you balance kind of uh, upgrading your current team versus um, not backing yourself into a corner a couple of years down the road when some of your uh, younger core guys start hitting their more expensive like arbitration years and, and once they start getting into yeah. kind of extension? I, I, think, I think you have to be careful. I think that is a great question, Gregor, and you always have to be thinking about that. At the same time, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have another uh, very significant deal with a lot of term to it, or maybe more than one, maybe more than two. Um, but you always need to have that five and six year understanding for what that means for um, you know, the team and the organization five and six years ahead. Thanks, Ross. All right, Greg. Go ahead, Caitlin. Hey Ross, thanks for your time. Um, just jumping on Gregor's question, like where does um, you know, extending your young guys um, fall on the priority list for this offseason? It's, it's the kind of thing that never stops. We're always thinking about that, and we are motivated to keep uh, not just our younger players, but players that have expiring contracts in the next year or two to keep this group together. Um, you know, so it, it's constant, and Obviously, <clears throat> not every individual is the same, as I mentioned, where they are in their careers. But um, it, the offseason does allow for, uh, you know, potentially, depending upon how things are transpiring, it will allow for just another opportunity where we can engage a little bit more specifically with our players uh, because it's not as stressful of a time. Right. Um, and another 
topic just on third base. Um, is that an area where you think you need to explore externally, or do you think you have your third baseman internally right now? Well, I, I think that we don't have to do it, but I think it's a an area where uh, we can. So uh, between Kevin Biggio, Santiago Espinal, Bravik Valera did a great job. Kevin Smith is an exceptional defender and had a remarkable year um, in AAA. Uh, there, there are ways for us to field teams without signing a third baseman, but it is an area that we will obviously be thinking about in free agency and trade. Great, thank you. All right, Caitlin. Your turn, Joe. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Jeans. Thanks for your time. Uh, this season is your first time to see the 162 game version of Hyun Jin Ryu. What do you see from him? Uh, I, I love him. Yeah, I mean, he, he is an incredible athlete and an incredible professional exceptionally consistent I love to watch his athleticism as a pitcher it's remarkable to me to see uh, what he's capable of from a command and execution standpoint with some power to his pitches as well um, you know his, his velocity was actually up higher at the end of the year than it was at the start uh, there is I love everything about him he's a great teammate he is incredibly respectful to all the stakeholders in the game and, and really does uh, set a nice tone for us. So uh, he's not a 200 inning guy, and he is, this is his first time to pitching 31 games a year. So he's, he's not a, that guy like pitching a ton of innings or a ton of games. Do you think he, you guys need more? more careful of his workload. What did you see from him? Especially after the August, he like, he's a little bit off tackle, like a little bit off the command of some party. What? Well, he how, finished. How do, guys, how do you guys manage him at the next two years? I, you know, I, we would expect him to be able to do what he did this year um, and maybe even more. Now, what that means in terms of workload, workload is so dependent upon just how he's feeling physically. Uh, but it will be something that we work with him on and, and work with him more closely and ensure that we're communicating. He and Pete Walker have a great dynamic that way. And, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, he's a huge part of that process. If there are times that we need to pull back and potentially skip a start or have shorter, shorter outings from time to time, um, you know, we'll be open to that. Thank you. Your turn, Greg. Thank you. Hey Russ, when you look back at the last year, do you have any regrets? That's a, I mean, it's a tough one. I mean, there are small things, obviously, that, um, you know, in hindsight that we could have done differently. Um, you know, mostly what I think about are just ways to improve and ways that we can do things better. Um, doesn't seem too, prog too productive to focus on something that I potentially um, you know, made the wrong choice on or the wrong decision. But um, I, I do obviously believe wholeheartedly in being humble and, and being accountable. And again, like I said, we're not where we want to be yet, but we are exceptionally proud of the players, of our staff, the work that they've done, how cohesive they've been, how, how collaborative our staff has been. You know, we'll focus on trying to make that better and better. And how do you feel about the sports term going all in? And how does a GM balance things to know when the time is right to do that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're all in. You know, I, I think then there's always the balance of, uh, you know, we were all in on, in 17 and 18 as well. But, uh, you know, it, it was making sure that we weren't doing too much too soon and making sure that we can do something that is sustainable and lasting. Um, and how that looks in just one off season or in two off seasons is always different. Okay, Mike. Hey, Ross. Uh, hey, Mike. Football as well. You too? Uh, I guess just building off what Greg asked you, if, if not regrets, uh, what about lessons learned? What what do you take from from this season 
uh, if anything, about uh, you know looking forward, what you could do differently. Well, one, I you know I for sure take away that we have improved our, our organization our team has improved the progress that we made offensively defensively from a pitching standpoint um, you know it is all better it's all better we finished stronger than we started undoubtedly um, you know secondarily as we've strived to be the best place in sport to play baseball the best place to come to work every day in professional sport we've made progress in that area as well and you know, ultimately, we had to overcome um, you know some other challenges this year that not every team had, and uh, our staff did a remarkable job of focusing on the controllables. And it was just one small challenge that we had that was slightly different than the challenges that other teams have. Uh, but our staff and our players did an incredible job of focusing on the controllables. So. Um, you know, it's it's a it's very difficult for me just to pinpoint one thing that I would do differently or say what I've learned because you know there's a lot that I would have done differently and there's a lot of things that I've learned. It's not just one thing. And I we're always we're always looking at our jobs that way and we're always thinking about how we can improve and get better. Okay, and the the other thing I wanted to ask is when um, when we had that last availability with Vlad after the last game. Uh, he said he would love to keep this entire group together and, and try to do it with the same bunch of guys. This is only a kind of a hypothetical because I know it's out of your control, but would you like to see also what this final roster could do over 162? Or do you believe that year to year every team sort of requires a little bit of a tweak here and there? Well, I can say this, that if it were in our control and we could just hit go on keeping the same team, then you know, all else being equal, that would be a decent start and a decent place to be. Um, but we just have to be open to uh, ways to improve and ways to continue to get better. And uh, that may include some combination of both of the things that you just mentioned. So it's not, uh, we, we certainly don't need wholesale changes and we are open to um, you know, a team that looks a lot like the team that we had at the end of the year. All right, thank you. All right, Mike. Your turn, Sung Young. Yeah. Hi, Ross. Um, earlier this season, Pete Walker, uh, Pete Walker uh, mentioned he's been watching uh, players like uh, Robbie Ray and Steve Mitch, and they saw, uh, he saw the potential, and then that's why we decided to bring them in. And I think this year, besides uh, Carlos Rodon of White Sox, those two pitchers are considered as most valued pitcher. Um, you don't have to give me a name, but this year, do you have those kind of list with the Pete Walker that you believe them, but they're on the value and you try to bring them in? We're, we're building them now. You know, we, we actually spend a lot of time thinking individually before we come together as a group. Um, you know, we've asked uh, well over 30 very detailed, specific questions to our entire baseball operations group. Uh, for them to think individually about how we can improve the team. And then we'll bring those thoughts and ideas together and discuss them and come up with those lists and those targets that we feel make the most sense for everyone. Thank you. I have one more question. We had the uh, three catchers in the month of September, and that's a little unusual. And I think uh, Gabriel Moreno showed his uh, potential. And now it's, that's going to make four good catchers in our organization. Do you have uh, any plan for uh, sorting them out or any plan for those players? Well, I, I can say this, that it's definitely an area where you feel good about having depth because of the lack of uh, free agents available, the lack of players via trade that are available in that position. Um, so having four guys that we feel could, you know, might be a little bit too quick and less than ideal for Gabriel Moreno, uh, but already having three that we feel confident to catch in a major league game. Um, you know, incredible progress by Alejandro Kirk and Reese McGuire and the way that Jano finished the year. I mean, he finished, you know, one of the better catchers in the game. So uh, those guys do a good job of, of working together too and pulling for one another, uh, balancing the playing time. So it's a, it's a good starting point. I'm glad we do have that depth there. 
and I'm, most importantly, I'm so glad you called it our organization. That, that goes a long way with me. I'm glad you feel connected. Thank you. It is ours. Yeah. All right, we'll get uh, one question each from the three remaining hands here to wrap up. Go ahead, Shai. With uh, beyond Mourinho and Martinez, uh, it seems a lot of your upper echelon guys didn't necessarily have the, the progression in the farm system that you, you might have liked. Uh, I'm wondering, just uh, in terms of where you stand with, I know you mentioned that you're in a good position to trade from your farm system if you needed to. Just how do you feel about sort of the depth and is and sort of the, the upside ceiling guys uh, and the fact that you know there there wasn't uh, you know as much maybe growth as as you might have wanted. Yeah, I actually feel really good. I you know Jordan Groshans, Otto Lopez, Kevin Smith, I already mentioned Josh Palacios. You know all those guys being in AAA potentially with Gabriel Moreno, and then uh, you know very confident that Thomas Hatch and Anthony Kay are going to have better years than the ones they had. Zach Logue is has had uh, a remarkable year, and will slot into that AAA t rotation again for us. And then you know Nate Pearson is still a huge part of our depth and our 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 potential moving forward. So. Um, you know, feel like our farm system's in, in a decent spot. Our international department has done an incredible job of identifying players, and uh, we've had a few good drafts. So, um, you know, the, the trades, the trade obviously for Barrios was, um, you know, was a, was a hit to our farm system, but we feel that, you know, we've weathered it and we'll continue to acquire talent. We're excited about the draft of this year. Um, and, and really, I, I can't say enough about the acquisitions our international department has had. All right, You're up, Gregor. Hey, Ross. Um, you guys have talked a lot about positional versatility in the past, and, and I know you guys haven't commented on it, but in the past couple of years, there was speculation that you also might be kind of going after some of the bigger name shortstops. Just wondering, after the year that Bichette had, um, how, how do you look at him defensively at shortstop, and are you guys committed to, to keeping him there uh, opening day next year? Yeah, I mean, he was he was unbelievable. I mean, and I think I said it a lot last year. He he's such an easy guy to, to bet on and believe in as someone's going to improve. And I think he's just scratching the surface. Uh, yeah, I mean, he it was every day it looked like he was making strides and progress, and his foundation was super strong. So that says a lot. Um, but we are obviously committed to him and believe in him and believe he's going to be uh, a very very good major league shortstop for a long time. So. Um, but we're open to acquiring other guys who have played a lot of shortstop, as you saw last year. Thanks, Ross. All right, Gregor. You're up, Ben. Well, I just wanted to ask um, about your coaching staff. And I understand these things can take uh, a few weeks or even months to play out. But at this point, are, are there any people on that staff who are definitively not coming back in 2022? No, they'll, they'll all be back. And that is, um, you know, again, it's just a, a testament to – Charlie's leadership to the work that they've put in from three years ago to, and, and obviously there's several of them that have been here a lot longer than three years, but um, you know, they, they've put our players in positions to improve. And you know, that is a lot to ask. And, and at this level, it's not just putting them in positions to have good performances, it's putting them in positions to get better and uh, we are exceptionally pleased with all of them. We'll, we'll think about if there's ways to tweak job descriptions and, and uh, help you know, improve upon what is here, but they will all be invited back. Good to know, thanks. All right. hey, we'll end here with Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Ross, thanks for your time. Um, I'm just wondering, I know you've got a lot of things to balance this off season, but where does the you know, the fact that we're going to be going through CBA negotiations fit into your strategic thinking in terms of how to approach free agents, when you approach them, and maybe even how you approach your own players about signing long-term contracts. Because the ground could shift a little bit, couldn't it? Yeah, I, you know, we're, that, that is a part of what we're spending time on internally. And then we're also spending a lot of time talking to Major League Baseball, what that could mean for us, what are the different scenarios, hypothetical or more concrete that we should be thinking about. And then as we have dialogue with agents, we'll get a better understanding as well. So, um, you know, there may be a point where we have to make a decision with a little bit of uncertainty. And, 
uh, at that point, we'll, you know, we'll have the support we know to do that and um, you know, we'll factor in that risk if necessary. Thank you, Ross. All right, Jeff. All right, thank you all for joining us today and thank Thanks you for your everyone. time, Ross.